Okay, we're back again today with another MRE video. We've got a brown bag one, again, that uh, is probably from the early 90s. I got this from uh, my buddy Justin. He uh, was a wildland firefighter with the BLM or Forest Service back in the early 90s while going to college. And he had this left over from some of the rations they'd uh, given him while out fighting fires. Obviously, uh, we know the chain of custody on this one, but as far as storage conditions, it's still a little bit of a question. It, uh, I'm sure, got really hot depending on where it was stored. Nevertheless, it's a menu number five. Spaghetti with meat and sauce. Accessory packet. Uh, it's kind of hard to read on there. Accessory packet B, packed by the Sopaco Company in Mullins, South Carolina. We're going to try it out today and see how it's held up. Uh, we've had some of these other spaghetti and tomato sauce based ones that are a little suspect. The uh, acidity of the sauce sometimes uh, goes funky, but we'll give it a try. Alright, we got everything unpacked. It looks like from some of the dates we see on some of the packages, this is a very, very, very early 1991 issue. We've got spaghetti with meat sauce and it's got a 1002 date on it, so that's uh, January 2nd of, two th of 1991. A maple nut cake, uh, crackers of course, accessory pack, Tabasco. They switched evidently to the large brown spoon, that's kind of interesting. A beverage base powder orange and some dreaded cheese spread. I don't know if this will be any good. The date on that is to be the 14th day of 1991. I'm not expecting that to be good, but we'll give it a try. I'll get everything out on the plate except for the main and we'll get that heated up while we get everything else sorted out. Okay, I've opened the maple nut cake and the spaghetti with meat sauce. Interestingly, the spaghetti with meat sauce was in a silver retort package. I don't see those very often. And it's got a uh, 1002 date on it. The maple nut cake uh, feels extremely hard in here. The package may be compromised, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel totally airlocked. So we'll see. We have to be careful of the nuts in that. As with many of these, the accessory packet that's inside the MRE is sometimes different than what's listed on the outside. This was listed as having an accessory packet B but we've got accessory packet A that has coffee, cream substitute, sugar, salt, chewing gum, matches, toilet tissue, and hand cleaner. Let's see what's, what's in here. Smells a little bit chemically as we open it up. We've got a Taster's Choice coffee. Matches. Toilet paper, iodized salt, looks okay. Second thing of toilet paper, Ooh, I hope that's not uh, a little foreshadowing of what's going on with this one. A second salt, interesting. Domino sugar, non-dairy creamer, we've got our chiclets gum and uh, of course our wet nap. They all look okay packaging wise. Well, be careful with the coffee. I'm sure there's not a problem with the, the salt or the sugar, but uh, we'll see on the coffee. Okay, let's mix up our drinks while we wait for our uh, food to heat up. I've got the spaghetti in a pot of boiling water on the stove just to warm that up. We know these early IMEs didn't come with a, a uh, flameless ration heater, so we kind of cheat when we heat that up. Here's our orange drink. It looks okay. Uh, the last one of these we had was more like a tang, but this may be more like orange Kool-Aid. Powder looks okay itself. The package has a date of 
two three, so the twenty third day of January. We'll pull out our trusty British canteen, our water. These take about half a canteen cup of water. Didn't look like it was crystallized in any way or any big uh, chunks or issues like that. We'll grab our MRE spoon here and stir this up. Seems to be mixing up okay. Smells like orange Kool-Aid. Again, I don't know if this one has as much of a tang flavor or not. Okay, we'll let that percolate there. Let's try our taster's choice. Smells okay. Don't, doesn't see any evidence of dry mold or anything like that. Just your standard instant coffee. Here's our non-dairy creamer. Well, that looks like it's caked up a little bit, but Hopefully dissolves okay. Let's see, we'll add in a packet of sugar. Our hot water. It's mixing up okay. I don't know how good that creamer is. It doesn't look like it's getting super creamy. Nah, that may be a problem. Yeah, see? Well, we'll let that sit for a little while. We'll go check on our main. The spaghetti's just about done. We'll go ahead and try and sample the crackers and get them ready while we're waiting. They seem intact. Pretty well sealed. They smell okay too. I don't think they've gone ex super extremely stale, but we'll see how they come out. Well, they're going to be difficult. Yeah, they came out mostly in one piece. These are 1043, so February of 1991 seemed to have survived. Go ahead and get the maple nut cake out. Now this one I'm a little suspect of because the bag itself is uh, doesn't feel like it's vacuum sealed very well. It's on one solid piece. You can definitely see the nuts in it. That's a little bit of what has me worried. It's very hard. It's got kind of a oily feeling on the outside. It's got a, a maple flavor. Of course you can see the, the nuts inside. Again, that's what I'm concerned about going rancid. Uh, Smell-wise, it, it smells fine. I don't think there's any indication that it's failing the smell test, but We'll give that a taste. Let me go get the the spaghetti out of the pot and I also put the cheese spread in there to see if that would maybe liven it up a bit. Okay, the cheese spread has been going with the spaghetti. It's now very uh, liquidy inside the package. It was packed by Thermopack at Stone Mountain, Georgia. It stayed uh, 14th day of uh, 2000, or 1991. It's now maybe uh, uh, not solid at all. Uh, okay, this is... 
Uh, it is not good at all. This is, uh, imagine, cheese whiz at its worst. I don't even really want to put it on the plate. Let me go get a separate bowl to put this in so we can then throw it away immediately. Okay, I don't have... Oh, no. This is not good. It stinks. Ugh. It's bad in every way that cheese could go bad. Uh, I'd have to get the gas mask out for this one. Uh, it's uh, not holding together. It's kind of separated from oil into whatever the remaining ingredients are. They don't put them on the packages, so I don't even know if there was any cheese to begin with. Uh, I'm going <coughs> to have to throw this away. It's the, the dog has run away. It's not very good at all. All right, I had to separately bag that uh, in its own Ziploc and throw it in the trash outside. It immediately stunk up the house. I'll be in trouble when the wife gets home about that. The, the It's got me a little bit worried now for the spaghetti with meat sauce. Um, it uh, It's very hot. It, it cooked up well and uh, uh, I'm just concerned now that uh, it may not be good either, but we'll give it a try. The pouch itself, it wasn't really bulging when we pulled it out of the package, but now that we boiled it, it, it may have picked up a little mass, but I don't see any leaks or, or holes in it to indicate that it, it has leaked in any way, but we'll open it up here. Okay, it, it does have a, a decent kind of spaghetti-o, spaghetti flavor, Chef Boyd-y style. The sauce is very thick, and it's also extremely hot as it's burning my fingers here. But, again, it certainly doesn't have the monster smell like the cheese does. It uh, came out here in one plop. Uh, we'll check this out. We've got kind of mini spaghetti noodles in there. Uh, I think there's there's kind of chunks of ground beef, not so much meatballs or anything, but but little bits of it in there. Um, again, without the them putting ingredient lists on here, I assume this is actual meat as opposed to some sort of textured vegetable protein or something like that, but it, um, again, it, it doesn't smell too bad. Um, we'll let it cool just a bit here and we'll sample some of the sides while we get ready to get to the main. First off, we'll try our orange drink. I think it mixed up okay. That's good. It's still, it's got a little bit of a metallic flavor and I don't know if that's mixing it up in the metal canteen can or just the nature of it being in the package for as long as it was. It's more orange Kool-Aid than it is Tang. It's also because of that and because of the age, it's probably sweetened with actual sugar. So it's, it's very, very sweet, which is not a bad thing. And it's got that Kool-Aid flavor that a kid would like. It uh, mixed with half canteen cup, it's still pretty strong, not watery at all, and, and tastes good. I think it's it's okay. It's it's pretty good for 30 years old. The coffee now, I'm I'm still a little bit concerned. I don't know if the that non-dairy creamer survived or not. There's still some chunks floating on top of that. Um, we'll give a little taste of that. It's okay. It's uh, somewhat weak in flavor. The Again, the, the creamer hasn't totally dissolved. Let me give it one last stir here after I clean my spoon off. You can obviously taste the sugar that's in there, but I, I just don't think the... Yeah, see there's a, a blob of the creamer that's still pretty much solid. I don't know if I'm going to dr drink any more of that just because I, I don't think that's good. The more it dissolves, uh, the less I really want to drink it. But 
I would uh, call that a fail as far as the creamer. The coffee itself is weak. The sugar was fine. I don't think there's a problem there. The crackers, which you know would have had the cheese spread to go with them, seem to be in pretty good shape. Crumbly like always. Um, these don't appear to have any seasoning or salt or anything on them like a saltine would, but we'll give that a try. The crackers are your standard MRE fare. They've got decent cracker taste, but also kind of that hint of cardboard. No salt, so obviously they'd be better with something on them. We might try them with some spaghetti on it later on to see if that jazzes it up a little bit. But they definitely haven't gone bad. The maple nut cake. Again, um, it's it's pretty hard and compact now. Usually these are kind of spongy and airy, but this one is not. It's uh, kind of hard. I'm going to take a, a bit here that doesn't have any nuts as far as I can tell. It's got a sweet maple flavor, kind of like a pancake doused in syrup. Uh, that part of it tastes okay, no off flavoring from the, the cake part itself. Well, there's a bit of nut. The nut was soft and squishy, which I assume is not a good sign. It's uh, starting to break down a little. The maple part is uh, very overpowering, but good. This would be something good. Uh, for breakfast, especially with the coffee, uh, to kind of start the day out. Again, I think the cake part is okay, but I'm getting kind of a funny taste from the nuts or the parts that have touched the nuts, and uh, I think I'm going to hold off on any more of that. Let's move to the entree. Again, it's it's cooled off a little bit. The sauce seems relatively thick. Uh, the noodles have held up. They, they look very soft and extremely overcooked. But I don't see any indication they've gone bad. Let's have a little taste. Okay, it's got, like I said, kind of a Chef Boyardee SpaghettiO type flavor. Uh, you can taste the, the the meat in there. It's like I said, little crumbled bits of, of hamburger. The spaghetti sauce is not too bad. It uh, seems to have uh, not taken on the flavor of the pouch and gotten me metallic like it would if it sat in a can for that long. Again, a kind of a processed tomatoey uh, sauce on it. Hardly would I call it spaghetti sauce, more like a tomato. Um, I don't think it needs any any salt. Uh, and uh, It's seasoned enough that we we don't need pepper. The Tabasco looks to have held up just fine. It's a little bit dark, but still has 95% of its water content. It's got a date of 0351, so this is uh, almost the uh, late December of uh, 1990. So, but I'm, I'm impressed that's held up, and I'm sure that's fine. We'll save that. Try a little bit more of this, and let's put it on a cracker to see if that jazzes our crackers up. Oh yeah, that's a good combination. You could even crumple a little bit of this up in your spaghetti to give it some some texture because it's all pretty soft, almost baby food like. I'll try it with that. Overall, this is not a bad meal. I'm sure in its heyday, the, the cheese spread would give you something to enjoy the, the crackers. And of course, you could put that on the 
spaghetti itself to to give it an extra cheesy flavor or sauce. It just it just didn't hold up hold up and was uh, somewhat painful to open and smell there. I'm not entirely certain why we got two salts or two toilet papers. Well, I think I know the reason we got two toilet papers is because if you were to eat all this right now, you're going to need probably twice that much. Um, that leaves us with the, the chiclets and the wet nap. Let me test out that. Okay, it's still got a little moisture to it, which is pretty surprising. Still that slight alcohol type smell. It uh, still seems capable of cleaning the cheese yuck off my hands. It's a little bit uh, weak as far as uh, the paper itself, but uh, surprisingly after 30 years, there's still some, some alcohol left on it. Got our uh, chiclets gum here. Let's see if this is spearmint or winter green or oh it's it's very hard. I don't want to break a, a tooth here, but that's a spearmint flavor. Very strong, good flavor. Once you chew it, it starts to turn into regular gum and actually pretty good at covering up of the flavor of what was in this MRE. Overall I, I think 50 to 60 percent of this is edible. The the nuts and the nut cake were what did it in the drinks and I, I should have skipped the the creamer when we saw it was caked like that. Otherwise the coffee and sugar would have been okay. Again, I want to thank my buddy Justin. Uh, we knew this was going to be somewhat of a risk. I think he told me that this had sat in his truck for a number of years just as an emergency backup. But uh, it would have to be a pretty bad emergency to want to eat one this old and, and rely on it. So we'll have to get him some, some newer ones to cover that. Well, we'll be back with some more rations and... and just a few weeks. I've got some new ones to do. New production MREs. We've got a French RCRR, a, uh, a British uh, meal, and a, a, a Spanish ration, and then some first strike rations we'd like to try out. Those are all 24-hour ones, so we may need to make multiple parts to our video to, to make that work. Again, Hit the like and subscribe if you like my, my video. Go ahead and leave whatever comments you'd like. I, I take them all to heart. And uh, thanks for tuning in and watching.